there's nothing wrong with being the underdog, so long as you come out on top in the end. I am Iron Man. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 movies that exceeded expectations. You got a purdy mouth! <laughs> For this list, we've chosen films that did far better than we originally anticipated, based on a mix of their box office numbers, critical reception, and accolades. I am Well, that's just as fascinating as the first 89 times you told me that. Number 10, Star Trek. You're capping now, Mr. Cook. With 2009 being a year for countless anticipated box office giants, including the sixth Harry Potter and James Cameron's Avatar, there just wasn't enough hype room, despite heavy promotional efforts for relative big screen newcomer J.J. Abrams, with the Star Trek reboot being only his second director credit. Kirk, how the hell did you get on board the Enterprise? What's more, with Star Trek's film franchise having a peculiar pattern for poor reception on its odd-numbered movies, the fact that this was number 11 in the series wasn't much of a help. Ugh, look, uh, I, I don't know you. I am Spock. Bullshit. Still, Abrams boldly and successfully took us where no man has gone before in this Back to Basics tale. With stellar effects, good acting, higher stakes, and lots of flair. Lens flare, that is. His work paid off big time. It would be my honor, Commander. Number 9. Pirates of the Caribbean, The Curse of the Black Pearl. Where did you get that? The fact that this fantasy flick is based on the classic Disney theme park attraction of the same name had even the mouse's most faithful fans skeptical, especially since said film would be the beloved family-driven company's first PG-13 release. Well, well. Jack Sparrow, isn't it? Captain Jack Sparrow, if you please. That skepticism did not go unpunished when audiences checked out the dramatic and haunting story of the Black Pearl's crew. Welcome aboard the Black Pearl, Miss Turner. Moreover, the film gave Johnny Depp his first Oscar-nominated role as cinema's most adored and charismatic pirate, whose misadventure spawned an entire franchise in the form of multiple explosive sequels. Not sure I deserve that. But more importantly, Hollywood's faith in what was considered a cursed genre was restored. You best start believing in ghost stories, Miss Turner. You're in one. Number eight, Rise of the Planet of the Apes. Yet another sci-fi reboot serving as a second directorial endeavor on our list. The announcement of this attempt had film buffs and pop culturalists alike thinking that Hollywood had sunk to a new low with its monkeying around. <laughs> Swapping practical costumes for equally believable CGI, plus another potent portrayal from Andy Serkis via motion capture, director Rupert Wyatt put up quite the revolutionary fight to rise above the cynicism. No! His battle paid off greatly, with the film garnering virtually universal praise and nearly half a billion dollars in box office numbers, making it the franchise's biggest gross until the release of the film's sequel. Eight. Ten. Yes. Number seven, World War Z. Based on the novel by Max Brooks, this film was considered a late entry to the zombie apocalypse re-spark. Despite promising trailers and the fact that Hollywood heartthrob Brad Pitt was in the starring role, the action horror movie's marketing failed to amp up the hype it was hoping to generate, with some predicting a flop due to the film's blockbuster budget. Instead, audiences were treated to a thrill ride, where a solid hero journeyed through a global pandemic setting. It was this unexpected, edge-of-your-seat execution that made World War Z not only well-received at the box office, but kept the pulse of the zombie genre alive and running just a little bit longer. <laughs> Number 6, The Hangover. You guys might not know this, but I consider myself a bit of a loner. Despite rising comic stars Ed Helms and Zach Galifianakis' names attached to the project, the film's release came at a time when comedy was finding success again on the stand-up stage, rather than on the silver screen. Four of us wolves running around the desert together in Las Vegas, looking for strippers and cocaine. Hence, The Hangover took audiences and critics by surprise, as it was expected to be an hour and a half of standard drunk, high, and fart jokes. In the face! 
in the face! Ah! Instead, moviegoers got their money's worth with an actual story filled with hilarious, dubious characters and clever setups. Can you say a dentist with a missing tooth? Am I missing a tooth? In terms of American box office records, it became the third highest grossing R-rated film of all time, as well as the second highest in the comedy genre. In other words, forget everything. Number five, Slumdog Millionaire. Welcome to Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Are you ready? Based on the novel Q&A by Vika Swarup, it's appropriate that this underdog story has found its way onto our list. So why don't you save us both a lot of time? And tell me how you cheated. A rags to riches tale involving a who wants to be a millionaire contestant accused of cheating, Jamal Malik's story was widely praised and marketed as a feel good film of the decade for its well paced, relatable characters and appealing plot. So it could be B, Ricky Ponting. Or D, Jacobs. Final answer. Not only was the film an ultra success with its 378 million worldwide gross at a $15 million budget, but it was additionally the strongest trophy reeler at the 81st Academy Awards, taking home a total of eight, including Best Picture, Best Director, and Best Adapted Screenplay. I was right. The Chaiwala has done it again. Incredible! Number four, 21 Jump Street. Down on Jump Street. 37 Jump Street. No, that doesn't sound right. Based on the 1987 television series, 21 Jump Street was that police-themed youth show that any pop culture fanatic could predict was bound for a bad Hollywood take. You will be going undercover as high school students. You are here simply because you look young. In one of its most praiseworthy adaptations, Hollywood silenced skeptics with a fun story, fun dialogue, and funnier performances in this action comedy, brought to us by the way of Phil Lord and Christopher Miller of Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs fame, as well as charismatic stars Jonah Hill and Channing Tatum. Guys, don't make me take you to the principal's office. Grossing a little over five times its budget, the film was picked up not only for an equally successful sequel, but also for a potential crossover project with another one of Colombia's most famous and well-beloved government authorities known for their black suits. Is it Jump Street? Yeah, yeah. That's funny because we were actually Jump Street. What? That's yeah. crazy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. A 23 Jump Street is also in the works. You two sons of bitches are going to college. Number three, Casino Royale. The name's Bond. James Bond. Same spy, same name. New guy, new game. With the franchise's previous three films not living up to the reputation of MI6's most badass agent, fans and critics alike just didn't know what to expect with yet another film loaded with stock stunts, car crashes, and explosions we've all gotten accustomed to seeing. 007 or not. Replacing Pierce Brosnan as the world's most famous spy, newcomer Daniel Craig and veteran director of GoldenEye, Martin Campbell, unexpectedly restored Bond to the glory days of such predecessors as Sean Connery and Timothy Dalton, introducing audiences to a more contemporary and relatable timeline, as well as a newly promoted double O. You noticed. Number two, Batman Begins. I'm Batman. With the Caped Crusader's previous film being as childish and cheesy as it was notoriously bad, DC fans and film buffs alike just weren't excited with the announcement of yet another soon-to-be-horrible adaptation of one of comic book history's most beloved superheroes. You're, uh, you're Bruce Wayne, the Prince of Gotham. You'd have to go a thousand miles to meet someone who didn't know your name. So don't, don't come down here with your anger. What they received instead was a masterful incarnation from the relative newcomer Christopher Nolan, who took the bat by the wings and stretched them out to soar with grand storytelling, stimulating themes, and the return to darker visuals. Are you coming back to Gotham for long, sir? As long as it takes, I'm going to show the people of Gotham their city doesn't belong to the criminals and the corrupt. The film not only went on to become a box office success, but respawned The Dark Knight as a glorified household name, shadowed by two enticing sequels that made it part of cinema's greatest trilogies. This is what happens when an unstoppable force meets an immovable object. Before we unveil our favorite, unfavorite pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Hey, Jesus. Happy to see you too. Oh, what the? Gretchen, stop trying to make fetch happen. It's not going to happen. 
Ah! Oh my gosh, my hands are stuck. My legs are stuck as well. I super hate you. Let it go, let it go. Can't hold you back anymore. I'm excited and I feel relaxed and I'm ready to party with the best of them. Number one, District 9. We're coming to you from the entrance of District 9. Originally greenlit as a Halo film, producer Peter Jackson and director Neil Blomkamp sought to use the existing props and set pieces of the adaptation for a new project after financing was deterred. What emerged was the sci-fi sleeper hit District 9. The derogatory term prawn is used for the alien and obviously it implies something that is a bottom feeder that, that scavenges the leftovers. Dependent on visual marketing as well as its stylistic, humans-only ads, the film retained a minimal presence in campaigning during its pre-theatrical release time. What is happening to my own? Just breathe deep. What is happening to my own, doctor? However, during its run, millions were treated to a visually alluring escape that tackled the serious earthly themes of xenophobia, social apartheid, and cultural ignorance. No. Please, you don't. I need to hide. Oh, good. They want to kill me. A feat which garnered it not only high box office numbers, but also four Oscar nominations, including Best Adapted Screenplay and Best Picture. I'm gonna get you there! I'm gonna get you to your boy! Do you agree with our list? Oh, jeez. Hey, shut my mouth. Look at the Unbelievable. Which film's mega success took you by surprise? We're not doing a good enough job. We can do better. We're gonna do something else. Like what? For more top tens exceeding your expectations published every day, be sure to subscribe to watchmojo.com. You call this a favor? Yeah, you owe me one.